So we want you guys. I'm going to turn my gas on. Um, I have a, um, a mix bottle here, 7525. Uh, you do not want to use uh, straight argon with this. You want a mix bottle. Metal, the heat metal, you really need to dial it in. And that little quarter of a setting could be the difference between burning through or not burning through. So, I'm going to show you guys actually, uh, you know, running a puddle here and the hand movement. We'll show you. We'll do a dry run to show you guys what it's like before we actually go under the helmet. Joe has a fancy little uh, lens set up that he put together that allows us to show under the hood, so you guys can really see what's going on with the puddle, which is great. So we'll do that in a, in a little bit. Uh, any questions? before I start tacking this together? Um, yeah, a couple questions. Sure. Uh, do you have any suggestions for welding vertical welding up and vert down? Uh, and also, um, if you haven't covered it, I was asking some other questions. Uh, can you weld aluminum with the MiG-175 that you're using? Oh, good, good. Yeah, I did skip over that. So the first question was, any tips for welding uh, vertical? The one thing to remember uh, that I, I always have to remember when welding vertical is you're fighting, when MIG welding vertical, is you're fighting gravity. You gotta move a lot quicker than you would if you're just welding you know, straight on, 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 the, uh, on the table. It also changes your welder settings a little bit, believe it or not. With the way you're setting the machine up, I tend to like to put my wire speed a little bit higher, and you really gotta move to go down the, um, down the, the, the piece. You can also move, which we'll show you in a little bit, I like to uh, weave the, the puddle back and forth a little bit when I'm welding, uh, doing any kind of vertical welding. For me, it seems to help to keep, you know, from having the weld uh, sag at all. Uh, that's another thing that you can do. But getting your machine dialed in is, is probably the most important thing. Machine dialed in and move quick. You got to move quick. If you sit in one spot, you're going to have, you're going to have your uh, weld puddle is going to stay molten for too long and kind of gravity is going to want to pull it down the weld joint and it's going to, uh, not fill, and it's also going to look pretty ugly. So, um, the other question we had was that was a good question. Thank you. Uh, the other one we had was, can we MIG weld aluminum? So the Eastwood, uh, the, the short answer is yes, you can MIG weld aluminum, depending on your machine. Uh, the Eastwood welder, in particular, our 175 comes with a spool gun. So the wire, the aluminum wire that uh, you need to weld aluminum with, it's softer. So if you try and run it through the machine through the the um, the liner through here because it's soft, it tends to ball up uh, just from the travel. And if your if your uh, if your cord is a little tweaked, it, it'll it'll just ball up and cause issues. So what we have is we have an, a spool gun. I don't think I have one sitting here, but we have an Eastwood uh, spool gun that comes with this machine. Uh, we usually throw the links up on the camera so you can see it on the on the uh, screen so you can see it. Click through, you can check it out. But the spool gun puts the wire right you know, right before the tip of the gun so that there's no time and it's a straight shot and it comes through. So you can weld aluminum, but you do need 100% argon. So you need to either keep a separate bottle. Uh, this is our pro cart here that you can put two bottles on at once. If you're just strictly uh, using your MIG welder uh, and you don't have a TIG or anything, uh, you can still keep two bottles here, which is great. Um, is out there on the market that you can see it's a little different, but yes, you can. So good. Is there any other ones, or should I keep moving? Uh, that's all the questions for now. Okay, cool. But there is one suggestion. Maybe do a video on spool gun usage in the future. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, we should do a. Uh, yeah, we'll put one together where we can weld some aluminum with with the spool gun. That might be a good live we can do here in the future. So I'm going to spot weld or not tack weld rather uh, this piece together. So I'm just going to hit the corners of the piece. And I'm going to watch the puddle, just get it to melt from the top. To, I usually start on the top piece and then melt it down into the Down on this, you can either clamp it uh, with a set of our, our locking welding clamps, or you can, you know, depending on what you're doing, you can just, since I'm just doing a quick tack weld, I'm pushing it down to make sure the piece is, is tight together here um, and it's not coming apart. It's harder to fill that gap, then you don't want to have a big gap. 
So all I did, you know, when you're practicing, tack the corners. If it's a long run, you may want to put a tack in the center just so that the piece doesn't uh, start separating from the heat as you're welding it. Uh, depending, you know, and depending on the thickness, you may need to put tacks every, every three or four inches to keep it from, from moving around before you weld it. But for what we're doing right now, this should be just fine. So when you're welding and doing uh, your hand motion, depending on if you're left or right-handed, uh, I'm left-handed, so I like to, uh, I hold the torch in my left hand or the gun in my left hand, um, and I travel from the left to the right. So if you're right-handed, opposite, you're going to start from the right and move from the right to the left as you weld, pushing it along. Um, I use the other hand generally. Stability is key, so you don't want to be just holding the torch and trying to just float in the air. Try and get comfortable, try and brace yourself. So what I like to do is I put the torch, uh, this area gets pretty darn hot, so I, use, I like to hold it down in here, and this, this area has a rubber on it. And I use that kind of as my pivot and my balance point. So when I'm welding, I kind of set it there. Whatever I'm doing, whether I'm you know, under a car or I'm whatever, I try and rest it on this hand somewhere and then I can move it around, I can change the torch angle however I want. So what I would do when you're welding is you can make uh, a couple different ways. You can make circles or you can make letter C's when you're welding. So of course I don't have a piece of paper here, but I'll show you on the table. That's why I got a nice metal table. So you can make, um, it looks kind of like shark teeth, but letter C's, you can go like this as you're welding. So that's what you're doing with your puddle. You're starting and you're coming back into the puddle as you go. So when we're welding, that's one, one way to do it. So you can go and we're going like this and we're coming back into the weld. And what's that, what's that is doing is just kind of overlapping the edge of the puddle, over tap the next one just to make sure that there is no, no breaks in the puddle. We have no holes. Uh, the other way you can do it is you can uh, do circles and just kind of just do loops like that as you're welding. So we can just go up, just do little circles. Again, either way, you're, what your idea is to try and come back into the weld before it and just fill in as you go. So that's just a simple way to visualize it. I think it's easy to, um, once you see it like that, it's a little easier. So the other thing is you want to keep your torch turned. So again, I'm left-handed. I'm going to weld left to right. So I'm going to keep the uh, torch kind of turned back. My, my left hand, the torch hand, I'm going to turn it back a little bit like this. And what that does allows you to see the puddle and you turn it at a slight angle so I can work across as I weld. So I'm keeping it on the edge of my hand here and I'm just welding like this. Doing the, doing the little C's or just doing little circles as I go. So uh, for most, most instances you're gonna be you're gonna be moving pushing like that, not pulling. But there is instances where you may need to do that. But. So I'm gonna weld, do a little welding here. Joe can probably get a under the lens shot once he gets set up. We'll get a, I'll move along and I'll do a section of this so you guys can see under the helmet, just pushing the puddle along. And then I also got some sheet metal here. We'll do a little bit of, uh, show you guys some sp spot or stitch welding on, on sheet metal and setting up your, uh, your torch for that. All right, so all right. Flip it over here. So you can now you can see uh, this lighting's pretty good here. You can see that 
it almost looks raised there, but that's that penetration that's coming through on the piece. We know we're getting a good penetration. We got, you know, our heat effective zones easy. Uh, heat affected zone is easy to see here, but you can see that little kind of ridge. I can see it at least going through. That's where where we can see it's it's penetrating through the the workpiece, which is great. Cool. So that's uh, for doing, you know, for running a puddle rather. That's the simple way. Simplest way to learn for me was to do this, the the circles or the letter C's. Any questions before I move on to sheet metal? Um, yeah, there's one question. Why are there two bottles on that tank? Oh, okay. Uh, so someone asked why is there two bottles? I covered it a little bit with the aluminum question earlier, but I'll go into it. So this particular cart here is our like pro model cart. This is cool because you can fit, uh, you can combo pretty much uh, our welders or any welders, but uh, with our welders, you can put a, a TIG welder on the bottom. Which is our TIG 200 is a little taller. You can put a plasma cutter on the bottom and a, and a MIG welder on top, however you want to switch it. But it has these two hoops in the back that are really cool. So you can put two welding bottles on. So we have our, we have our mix bottle for doing uh, MIG welding. Uh, most things we can do steel, stainless uh, with the mix bottle here. And then we have a 100% argon bottle here. And I know they're kind of flipped the wrong way. It's hard to see, but... Uh, we have an argon bottle on the other side. Now the argon bottle can be used, is used for aluminum welding with the MIG welder. So we can unhook our, our gas line here and swap it over to this one if we're using the spool gun and the MIG welder. Or uh, for TIG welding, TIG welding uses 100% argon for all welding basically, 99.9%. .9%. You're using 100% argon. So that's the main reason we have it on here. But when we do need to fire up the spool gun on the MiG-175, all we have to do is just quick disconnect the line, borrow it from the TIG welder and put it up here and we're ready to go. So that's why there's two bottles on here. Uh, it works nice, nicely for switching them around. I don't like having to roll a tank you know, from one place to another every time I want to switch it. So it's quick and easy. All right, good questions guys, I appreciate them. So now I'm going to show you a little bit of, of uh, setting up on sheet metal. I'll set that to the side. So for, for setting up for sheet metal, uh, most of the times when you're MIG welding with sheet metal, you're doing where you do here. Uh, sheet up. Uh, actually, we'll turn it all the way down. We'll turn the speed all the way up. That's what I see a lot of with, with guys that are just, and girls, that are just learning to, uh, to do this. That bird poop is not what you want. That's, that's not weld porn worthy. And what you're getting is those welds that are just sitting on top. They're too cold. They're not actually penetrating the metal. Uh, so I have a turn kind of way out of whack. So what I'm going to do is we'll turn our wire speed, uh, we'll, we'll leave our wire speed pretty fast. And another thing is, especially when we're doing sheet metal, there gets to be a little a ball on every time you do a weld, there's a little ball in the end of there. And that ball is probably twice the diameter of the wire that's coming out of there. So to, to initiate this, this next spot or stitch weld, it would take probably no gap that it allows you to the wire to fill up that gap um, and make sure that you're getting 100% penetration. It is good, but it's difficult, especially for beginners, because by making that gap, you're uh, already going to be having trouble with blowing through and making a bigger gap when you're doing that. So. It does work, but it's, it's kind of tricky. I don't particularly like it. Uh, I like to try and keep the panels butted together as close as I can. The other option is uh, we have our perfect panel prep tool. Uh, that we have both a manual version and a pneumatic version. 
And if you check our YouTube channel, we have, uh, we have a couple great videos of that in action. But what that does is you can basically create a bevel in this piece that allows you to butt it together, but gives you a little bit of an area to fill your, your, uh, your MIG wire to fill in that gap and give you a nice flat weld so that you can butt weld it together with no gap. Um, but you can get a nice flush weld so that you're not grinding too much off. Uh, if you practice enough though, you can with technique do it without the pliers, but it takes a lot of time. Um, it takes a lot more practice and machine setup to do it that way. The pliers or, or the pneumatic version of the perfect panel, panel prep tool makes it way quicker. You can just go across, flange it, lay your weld in, and you can go. Um, I'm going to show you uh, we have a couple of videos on that to show it very well how much quicker it is, but I'm going to show you zapping this together and trying to get a nice flat weld if you um, are just learning and don't have that tool. Beginning here, that one weld in it, see how it opened up all the way across. So you could fight that a few ways. We could have added a bunch of clamps in here to keep it from doing that. That's probably the best way to do it. Um, but you need to, what I was trying to show here is that if we just keep working from here down on the piece, it's going to keep opening up on us and getting all out of control. You need to tack weld your panel as you go across to keep everything uh, happy and tight, you know, the joint nice and tight together. So you can see, uh, because it's just the first tack weld, I can squeeze this together and trap the panel so that we don't get that and to keep opening up, so I'm going to pull that out so that I can just get it, get in and get out. So now we have it trapped, so it's not going to open up on us, but if we start just working from this end and working across, what's going to happen is these center areas, they're going to want to actually overlap. I mean, you can see how easy it is just to make these, these suckers overlap. So it'll go like that, and then they'll start, they'll start overlapping and they'll flop over top of each other. If that happens, you're in trouble. That causes a lot of issues. So you're either going to have to cut the panel apart or you're going to have to put a relief cut in that, that seam and it just turns into a freaking giant mess. So what I like to do is just work across the panel and you check it as you go, but weld every three, or three to five inches um, to keep everything locked in place before you really start welding it complete. Now, that was a good example of where that, the ball on the end, I didn't quite weld quick enough between the two of them. And what happened is I had that little ball had formed on the end of the wire. You can see these three are nice and flat. Hardly require any, any sanding at all. But then and this one here, for that, that thicker wire that we had there, that create, created that, that balled up or, or, or all right so that was our spacing kept the piece together so it didn't start overlapping itself now we're ready to start jumping around on the panel and welding it together uh, one thing you need to remember, though, is you need to keep a hammer and dolly handy so you can adjust any areas that might start to act up on you. Uh, for instance, this little spot right here, we can see we, it's not quite flush anymore. It was starting to want to kind of come up over itself. So right there, we need to make sure with a hammer and dolly right now, we adjust that area. We hit it with a hammer and dolly, flatten it out, uh, make sure that that's a smooth seam before we continue. If you allow that to go any further, it's going to flop over itself and the panel's gonna get all crazy and you're gonna be fighting that issue all the way through paint. Uh, you can see on the back side here, it's nice penetration. I mean, we're getting full penetration all the way through. That's because I have the machine set up on the Any questions about the sheet metal stuff or otherwise? Um. We have uh, a question on YouTube, one that comes up a lot from Ken. Uh, could you discuss the benefits of TIG versus MIG? Okay. 
Or uh, why you would use one over the other, maybe? OK, cool. So Ken asked us a question we get all the time. Uh, the, the advantages of using a MIG welder versus a TIG welder when working in sheet metal, I'm assuming he's uh, asking. Uh, I prefer, as I've gotten better, I prefer using a TIG welder on, on sheet metal. Uh, if you're just starting out, uh, I don't suggest just jumping right into sheet metal with a TIG welder. It's very difficult. It takes a lot. It takes three times as much more work to TIG weld a panel as it does to MIG weld a panel, uh, just because of the process, how clean it needs to be. Um, but TIG welding is nice because TIG welding is the second softest weld next to oxyacetylene welding. What that means is, is you can planish the weld, you can hammer and flatten the weld out. With a MIG welder, you can't really hammer on the weld too much because a MIG weld tends to be brittle. So if you hammer on the weld too much, it's not really going to flatten, it's going to crack. So you can adjust this panel a little bit, but really in the end of the day, you need to grind it. With a TIG weld, it's softer, or an oxyacetylene weld, <clears throat> it's softer, so we can actually smash the weld down into the panel and flatten it out so it basically requires no grinding or, or removal of your filler material, which is really good. The other thing is, because of that, you can, you can run it through an English wheel, uh, you, can you can adapt it like you could the metal before if it wasn't welded at all. So we could, we could bend it, um, we can bend the piece, we can run it through an English wheel, planishing hammer, anything like that and it's going to act the same. It's not going to crack. It's not going to uh, change. Whereas a MIG weld, it may tend to stress fracture and you know, it gets weak in stress fracture. Uh, the other great thing is it's easier about all metal warps, you see metal warps, no matter what type of welding you do. It just depends on the amount of warpage. With MIG welding, like the type of weld. So uh, there's differences, but the time it takes to TIG weld a panel versus MIG weld, especially if you're a beginner, uh, and the, the uh, skill it takes is just incredibly difficult compared to MIG welding. I mean, you saw how quick I set this up and welded it. TIG welding would have taken us two, three times longer. So that's the short, as short as I can make it on the differences. <laughs> so that's a, that's a good question. Um, so like we talked about here, Got this panel welded, so I'm going to do a couple, a couple more jumping around on this panel to weld it up to just show you guys uh, as you fill it in how to do this. And then, uh, if we have any more questions, I'll answer them, and then we'll we'll uh, finish out our broadcast. So, if you have any any additional welding questions, uh, now's the time to drop them in. I'm just going to do a little more jumping around on this panel to show you how you would do it uh, if you were welding up a patch. So. Not to contradict myself, but I should fix that before we go any further. So, grabbing our here, we have a little, little lightly hammer on, so it's good to adjust it in between your welding. And I'm only using this because the dolly behind this, but if it was on the car, I'd keep working our way down. So I've got the machine set up already. I can cut a dolly out. You know, you can go back and just any areas that look like they're Kind of getting out of whack. Just lightly tap on them. Make sure they're flat. And the panel's already starting to cool down enough we can probably uh, keep moving here. So I'm going to run this down a little more.
So I hit this. He probably could watch as I'm welding. This piece is starting to go, right? It's warping. It just is the nature of, uh, of the beast. They're welding. Uh-oh. I got good penetration there. Uh-oh. That might be the end of our broadcast. <laughs> no. Um, now, you could put a copper backer down if you're doing something to keep that from happening, but I must have just stayed on the trigger just a hair too long. But you can see that uh, all of these are getting 100% penetration all the way through. So we know that if we uh, dress the top of these welds uh, on this piece, we're not going to have any issue because we know it's welded all the way through. So you can see we're just going to jump way down to here and go zap, 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 and just jump around and keeping your, your, making sure your panel is cool. So the way I like to wait and let it cool down some more. I do not suggest shocking it with water. Uh, it work, it basically like work hardens it and uh, by shocking it with water. You can use cool air, compressed air, to kind of help cool a panel down a little bit. But shocking it with water, A, it's, it's what we're trying to fight. You're putting water into a bare metal piece, which is causing oxida oxidation immediately, uh, basically. So you, you try not to do that, but also you're kind of shocking the panel by putting ice cold water on it, which isn't good. Um, it can help, uh, putting cool air, air on it can help reduce the warpage a little bit uh, if you're getting too much heat into a panel. But if you just jump around and let it cool like this, you, you won't have that issue ends up making the cause you trouble. Any other questions? That's that's what I got for kind of my MIG 101 for thick and thin metal. That's all the questions for today. Great. All right, and guys. We're off Monday. Yes. We're, we're, I know we've been saying we're coming live every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at yep. 3, but the next two Mondays we have off for Christmas, holiday, and for New Year's. So, we'll, but we will be live next Tuesday, Wednesday, the following Tuesday, Wednesday, and then starting whatever, the second week in January, yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're live every day at 3. Cool. So, yeah, just a reminder for you guys to follow this, you know, make sure you, uh, you mark your calendars. We try to do these every, every day. If you have, uh, every day that he mentioned. If you have any, any ideas for future tech videos or product videos, we already got a great one for the spool gun already. Uh, make sure you drop it in the comments, and we'll do our best to put it on the schedule and get it live going for the future. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll catch you guys later.